Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Wednesday, which normally means it'd be time for viewer track reviews. But today, because it's that the thing that I need to be working for me to be able to do that isn't ready yet, it's time for a basic terminology video. This one is about sampling. This is about the process of digital sampling, which is how digital audio works. Not the, uh, I guess, sound design technique. Um, <clears throat> before we get started, though, I want to point out that in the description of this video, I have linked a far superior video explaining digital sampling that uh, more or less all of my information is coming from, except for my explanation on bit depth. I kind of I like, I like that a little bit better than what uh, went on in that video, but the video is a lot cooler. It has, a, has better examples and it uses a whole ride, wide range of just really cool stuff to explain it. So if unless you just like to hear me talk, watch that video because it'll make a lot more sense. But um, I'm going to I'm going to keep going anyway. Sorry. Anyway, uh, sampling is how digital audio is able to exist. Because a real audio signal, if you, if you look at this sort of waveform here, a real, a real audio signal is a continuous, unbroken, just signal of an oscillation that creates sound that goes out to a speaker, and the speaker moves, and that's what the thing is. And it's if you were to slice it infinitely, you would have infinitely more slices, because that's just how functions function. Now... Digital sampling can't do that. I mean, it can. Well, no, I can't do that. It's 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 it has a has to have a finite amount of points. It actually has to have like it has to graph all the points for it to actually be able to like put the audio out there. However, funky stuff happens that allows it to actually come back out of your speakers as a continuous actual signal. Weep. So if I zoom in here, this is a kick sample. This is a seven oh seven, and this is what this looks like in the sampled sampled version of it. Um, so we see here, we see all the sample points, and then we see this line in between that goes through all the points. Before we explain that, let me just sort of explain sample rate, that kind of thing. So sample rate, you hear that often. Actually, you can see it up here. Sample rate, 44, 100 hertz, which is to say that these points are occurring 44,100 th 44, times a second. And that's how, I mean, that's, that's stupidly high resolution. Um, that's way higher than like our sort of theoretical limit of frequency hearing, like how high a frequency we can hear, which is not super relevant in terms of that actual number because as it turns out, there is a um, there's something called the Nyquist frequency, which is the highest frequency a given sample rate can create, and that's half the sample rate. So 44,100, half of that would be 2205, 22,050. And that is the highest frequency that 441 can create which is, is, is basically above the average human hearing limit. I'm sure some people can hear that, but not many. Um, so that's, you know, what that number means. Now, when we look at this, uh, we, have to, we, have to, we have to consider two things. One is that when we have all the points going on out here, this line is actually what we have going out. And uh, it's important to mention that this might not be the best Sample these as an example. Let's go find a better example. Let's look at something a little crazier. Higher frequency. Like a hat. Oh, look at that mess. Okay. So, um, this hat, this business here, this is a bit more, this is a bit crazier. And we can see that, like, the points barely seem to actually equal anything. And so how, how does it know that this line is the line that's supposed to go through it because it's not it's not as if it recorded that line like take these two points here we can see these points we can see okay cool there's a point there and a point there but how the hell does it know to make the curve do that because it, cer it certainly can't be just any line that goes through here can work because you can make a tiny change to this and it'll still fit but <clears throat> it comes back with that idea of that nyquist frequency the calculations that are necessary for um, the sampling to sort of solve these points utilizes something called band limiting. And this, this is explained way better in that video I mentioned. But the, uh, the the idea of band limiting is that we do what we are solving for these points, but uh, part of that equation is that if whatever we're doing, we can't generate frequencies that are higher than Nyquist. So in order for, with, with that knowledge in mind, there is only one solution to all these points, and that's this line. And the reason why that is is because if we moved any of these, even a little bit, it will generate frequencies higher than Nyquist. So that's how it knows that these this line is the only line that can work. 
which is pretty great because even though these samples are like way less like resolution than the actual line coming out of here, we can still get this actual line coming out of here. And this signal will be what gets put out to speakers for us to hear as smooth, uninterrupted audio, which is fairly sweet. <clears throat> so that's how sample rate works. And so like, you know, a higher sample rate just means that it gets sampled more. <clears throat> so there's more points per where there would be. It's a little bit more accurate and that kind of thing. Um, the other, other part of this though is bit depth. So when you look at a graph like this, it's actually, um, it's actually uh, double axis, double axis. I've never said that word before. Hmm. Point being is that there's there's the horizontal resolution, which is um, the sample rate. Wow. And then there's the vertical resolution, which is bit depth. And the bit depth determines how many levels of like volume you can have. I actually have a better visualization for this. Actually, this is gonna be super sweet because I can do this now. Ah, that's so cool. So, <clears throat> I'll turn this to stereo mode. Now, whoop. This is essentially what bit depth is. The idea that from silence to loud, maximum loudness, there's only a certain number of steps of volume that there can be that it can actually end up on. Much like, um, you know, this this is in, entered into part of the equation. Much like the rest of the um, the uh, the samples, and th th this is saying that like you know it's not like super stair steppy like this. It's it gets you know equaled out to be something smoother, but. Um, even at really low bit depths, like 16, this is pretty much the lowest you're going to find, but even lower than that, it's hard to detect a difference. And in fact, uh, when you, uh, the, the, the effect that you're probably used to using called bit crushing is what happens when you lower the bit, the bit depth a lot, a lot that, or called quantizing where you quantize the, uh, the waveform into being these stair steps, you get uh, super duper, like crunchy sounding things. Now, 16-bit is already wet enough, like it's super high resolution enough that if we were to do a smooth sweep of volume of like a sine wave up and down, we wouldn't hear any real distortion. It wouldn't be, it's not, it's, we wouldn't notice it. Practically nobody ever has. Um, and then 24-bit is even higher than that. And then there's an extra one called 32-bit floating point. So um, the, the way that bits and bit depth and measuring things by bits works is that it's not a linear thing. It's an exponential thing. So it was just to say that 24 bit is a lot more than 16 and 32 bit is way more than twice 16. So the, th the thing is, is that 16 bit and 24 bit both measure from, uh, silence to zero DB in how we measure zero DB. 32 bit, however, just keeps going. 32-bit uses the same resolution, the same, essentially, the bit density, and um, it just keeps going above 0 dB. The value of this is that in something like FL, which runs at a 32-bit floating point internally, where does it say it? Where does it? Aha. In 32 LSB. The um, value of this is that, like, while I could redline a mixer insert <clears throat> at this stage, it's not actually destroying the information. It's going above zero dB, and the red lighting is telling us, oh, hey, you're clipping. You're going above zero dB, but it's not literally clipping. It's not destroying the information to the point where if I brought it down before um, and went, it went out of the master, it would, be, it would be safe. It would still be there. You would hear it clip, and you would hear it distort because your playback is 24-bit maximum. There are 32-bit audio interfaces, but they're not super common. But point being is, while even though you're hearing a clip, the information is still there. You can just turn it down at the master and your, your peaks will still be there. It's super handy because that, now you don't really have to worry about, like in the mixing sense, you don't really have to worry about um, going above 0 dB for any real reason. The, the ceiling above uh, 30, uh, 0 dB is something stupidly high, like 1600 dB or something like that. I, I don't know the math on that, but a guy who I trust on the matter said that and I... I'm going to qualify the hell out of that statement, but it does sound super impressive when I say it, doesn't it? So that's um, sort of the value of 32-bit. As far as sampling goes, though, we could think of this as being sort of the vertical resolution of the graph that the points get put on. And then the horizontal resolution is the sample rate itself, which happens so freakishly fast that we don't really notice it. Um, <clears throat> there are obviously higher resolution, some higher sample rates, that kind of thing. Um, for like synthetic audio, it really doesn't matter, but sometimes it matters when you're recording things and, and when you're recording like physical, actual things with actual microphones, 16 bit and 24 bit matter a little bit more.
because it what that translates to in most audio interfaces is the distance between um, signal and the noise, so the signal to noise ratio, that kind of thing. 24 bit just means more headroom than there was like before. Um, <clears throat> it depends on the kind the kind of preamps you're having and like the how the interface handles and that kind of stuff. It's pretty normalized now, but a lot of it's a, it's it's something you gotta keep in, keep in mind when you're like when you're doing that kind of stuff. And I mean, everything's 24 bit now anyway, so it's not like it's not like you're gonna you know run into processing issues. Um, other fun stuff that happens with sampling though is uh, sort of whenever we talk about oversampling or resampling and that kind of thing. I mentioned before the Nyquist frequency. There's actually a, something called aliasing, which happens when you try to force it, force a frequency above Nyquist. And what ends up happening is that instead of the frequency going higher or going away, it goes lower. It wraps around and goes down below uh, Nyquist about as far as you try to push it above Nyquist. So if you try to go 30K, you, that's like you know 8K higher than Nyquist. You're going to go 8K below Nyquist, which ends up being like 12, 14K, you know? So that's a problem. So the way that they deal with that is there, there's a couple of different ways, but the way that I'm familiar with is that you create a super duper sharp filter right there so that the frequencies never actually are able to be created to try and go above Nyquist. The other things that happen are something that's a bit more relevant for compressors, something called intersample peaking. And actually, there's a couple of examples of it happening right now. Uh, this... Um, Right, right here, you can see that the point here, point here, and the peak is just going away. Uh, the top of this graph is zero dB, so this is saying that this sample is peaking. Now, the reason this is happening is because uh, normalizing processing. Actually, here's a question: If I normalize this, will it know? Nope. Uh, like the measurement of like digital measurement of audio is measuring the samples. And when you compress something, it's measuring the samples, which is usually accurate enough. But the problem gets to be when you're measuring like, okay, cool, this is this right there is a the maximum level that this particular sample is at. But then the actual signal generated is higher than that. That means that for that one incredibly small second, depending on if it is actually that small, you're, cl you're clipping. This is something that's really only true for like really high frequency things. Like this is a hi-hat. This is why this is happening. Because if you're, if, you're, if you're dealing with like a lower frequency sound, like we were doing with that, that kick earlier, Here's an 808. <laughs> is that the starting cause? Probably. I have a wave shaper on. Derp. There we go. You zoom in far enough, you can see the samples are like super duper smooth. Like, because there's a lot of them. There's barely, there's n no peak that is like enough above a sample that allows it to like really help deal with it. But the hat. The information is so high frequency that there's a plenty, the plenty of points that are that are you know not necessarily dense enough to just fully represent um, what the uh, you know that particular peak is doing. So some plugins like Maximus will have an oversample section, an oversample option, and what the oversampling does is that just for this particular plugin, it's actually going to process the it's processing the um, uh, audio at a higher sample rate. It'll actually put in samples. Uh, more samples in there for it to get a, a more accurate uh, image of what of what the, the audio is doing. This is not this is something that like analog compressors don't really have to deal with because they're able to just process it, you know, the signal in real time forever at a perfect resolution, that kind of thing. Um, now you might be thinking to yourself, oh my god, intersample peaking, that's awesome, that's awful. Digital sample, digital sampling and digital compressors are the worst. But Many of you are here are producers and have been producing for a while and have to ask you, have you ever noticed? Have you really ever noticed? A lot of people, I, I've actually, uh, I only discovered this because I was looking up, I was looking up reviews on compressors and people who like apparently review compressors for a living use inter the measurement of inner sample peaking as like a standard of quality, which I mean, if we're going to be frank is absolutely true. Um, but like, I didn't know that was a thing until that happened and i'm not gonna say i'm the most wonderful producer in the universe but i kind of got i've gotten away with not caring about it for so long and i absolutely have tracks that do that like i went and looked later like most of them do um it helps that you know my, that my style of music is as, as such that most things are distorting anyway so a tiny bit of extra bit of that ain't really gonna damage it a lot but um i have to imagine some people might be a little bit frustrated that they're doing a bit smoother music and that this is happening and they're still 
hammering up at hammering up at zero db and some of the peaks are going above it because it's measuring the samples and not the actual signal something something to be aware of a lot of i have to imagine ozone has some kind of oversample setting and so does like the pro l's and the, of the world and that kind of thing so but that's something to be aware of this is another consequence of just how sampling operates you might be thinking to yourself well if i ran a 96k or 182k would it be more accurate and yeah it would um and if you want to do that, by all means, go for it. But it, again, begs the question of whether or not you'd even notice. And like, you can even you can even try, you know, try and like create a couple of things that are like some of these have intersample peaking, and some of these don't. They're the same track, and see if anybody will ever notice. Some people might. I'm not saying that it's like a totally invisible thing, but like the majority of people won't. And so it's up to you as to whether or not that extra bit of processing, because it does add a little bit more CPU. And especially if you're, if, I mean, just working at higher sample rates uses a lot more processing than you might think. I mean, I have a pretty brief, beefy computer, and I can barely handle some of my projects at 44 watts. So, um, but that's just the thing to be aware of. And that's also sort of what other stuff, like, uh, I mentioned, um, actually, I already have a wish it broke, but don't I? I mentioned the aliasing, and oftentimes, plugins will have oversample settings, and there's also the live uh, resampling setting, inside the audio setting over here. The resampling and oversampling uh, are not entirely the same. They're not really the same word, but they mean the same idea in this case where they're both designed to prevent aliasing. In the case of image line, uh, the audio settings in the FL, this is for sampled audio. So when you have recordings like the hi-hat or whatever, and you're into sampler, this, this is to prevent um, anti-aliasing from those things so if you if you pitch up a hi-hat it's already pretty high frequency it's going to create some aliasing i have a two-point linear which is to say that it's not doing anything um by default i think it's at 24 point and then th you might recognize this from the render window and uh this is the same thing in the render but this is just what it does live and i have it at two point because it doesn't use any cpu when you do it like this you save cpu saving techniques um it might matter sometime, but what will matter is that if you render your track with a different setting and you have done a lot of stuff with audio and some of them are pitched up and around and distorted or whatever, because um, this only does apply to like the actual source audio, like effects and stuff like the Wave Shaper, you notice it has its own setting. And no matter what I set this to, this will still come out like that. And as, as well, um, any other synth that has built-in anti-aliasing settings, that kind of thing. I mean, even notice that even this one has a draft and render option by default. Yeah, this setup. This is, you have to sort of be aware that there are draft and render options where some of them will render with different settings than they do when they're live, which will contribute to if your track sounds different render than it does when you're playing it live. Sometimes you might want it to because sometimes you want to have some anti-aliasing, but it's too taxing to do that live. So you just say, cool, render with all of it, and then I'll deal with this when it's live. And then if you prepare for that, then yeah, that's cool. But, <clears throat> it, <clears throat> it, but <clears throat> aliasing... Is only bad if it sounds bad. Sometimes it's actually there. You're not you're not aware it's there. And it's contributing to the texture of your sound. It's contributing to how like certain things feel. And if you're not if you don't know it's there and something is gone, you'll know that it's gone. You won't know why. This is one reason why. Let's keep that in mind. And that all has to do with when you try to force audio above Nyquist frequency. The Nyquist frequency being half the sample rate, which is the highest frequency that you're capable of generating in a given sample rate. If you want to make higher frequencies, you can uh, push up the sample rate. When you, do, it's funny because when you do that, um, and you go to the EQ, like when you go to the, the pair of EQ, EQ two, this actually increases uh, the the what where the higher frequencies are actually gets higher, and it's pretty cool. Uh, anything else I need to worry about? We already talked about, I guess, sort of the, the important parts. Bleh, thank you, Facebook. Jeez, I'm a professional. Um, if you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to watch the way better video about this that I linked in the description of this video, um, for the sake of knowledge. Uh, don't forget, I already said that, and as usual, have a nice day. Awesome. I did a good job.